Hello, Tizzer friends. Uh, not too long ago, I posted about five videos on, I called it vectors and tensors and general relativity. Uh, I went back and looked at them. I don't like them. Uh, the thing about my channel is uh, it's just disjointed. It's just, it's I'm all over the place. <laughs> I just like whatever I'm interested in or excited about, I'll make a video about. Well, as I said in one of those videos, after I retired, I was looking for something to do, I started to study relativity, absolutely loved it. And I had this extensive notebook of all the, the, the stuff I learned because I'm old and I had to start with what's a vector. I mean, uh, I really had to go back that far. So I had just so many notes and I said, hey, I'm going to put all these down in a video. Maybe someone will get some use out of them, but they're all disjointed and they don't make any sense. So I'm going to do them over. And I want to tell one continuous story from what is a vector to uh, actually solving a simple Einstein field equations. Okay, so I'm starting over uh, and I want to tell this as one story. A vector and tensor, the syntax into vector algebra, the basis vectors as derivatives, uh, the coordinate transforms. Then we're going to do the metric tensor and polar, the coordinates. We're going to define covariance and contravariance. Then we're going to do the metric tensor and spherical, the coordinates, Christoffel symbols and spherical coordinates, Riemann tensor and spherical coordinates, Ricci tensor, and finally the Ricci scalar. So hopefully this will all be one continuous story and it'll make sense. And I won't have to keep referring you to look over here and look over there. All right. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, here we go. This is video number one. What is a tensor? A tensor is a geometrical object that is invariant, does not change, under coordinate transform. This is my favorite definition of a tensor. It's okay if you don't know what this means. We will by the end. Okay? What are tensors? What are they for? Tensors are used to describe real-world objects like velocity, acceleration, the forces, even black holes. The word tensor is a general classification of, as example, this. A tensor rank 0 we call a scalar, it's just a number. A tensor rank 1 we call a vector, you've all seen vectors, like an example would be velocity, where you'd write that as a bold V or maybe a V with a bar over it. A tensor rank 2 we just call a tensor. An example would be the metric the tensor, which is, is, is used widely in uh, general relativity. And it's written as a small g with a subscript mu and nu. Okay? So all everything is a tensor. It's just that for the rank 0 and 1, we gave them special names because they're used so widely. Okay, vector and tensor, the syntax in general relativity is generalized. <laughs> so it's general and it's generalized. Uh, and it's very confusing. When I first started this, I got lost so many times. You see equations like this, and you go, oh, my goodness, what is all these i, j's, and k's, and why are they up here, and why are they down here? We're going to learn all this, okay? So the coordinates in general relativity are written as x superscript 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, and x0 is the time, the, the coordinate. And x1, x2, x3 is, are the x, y, z space, the coordinates. We're all used to working with x, y, z, right? Well, general relativity works in four dimensions. So they added another component. And why he started with zero, I do not know. But he did. I've tried to find that out, and I haven't been able to. We're going to start in two dimensions because uh, it's much easier. And you learn just as much. So there's no point in, just, in stressing ourselves out with three dimensions until we have to. Okay, so we would write a vector as a linear combination of its components and its basis vectors, okay? So as an example, V1 is the vector component in the X1 coordinate direction, and E1 is the basis vector in the X1 coordinate direction. Now we can generalize this to look like this. So we would say this vector is equal to the sum of n equal 1 to 2, in our case, we only have two dimensions, of vi e i. Now, when Einstein was developing his relativity, he uh, noticed that every time he ran into this 
upper and lower indexes being the same, he said, oh, there's a, there's a sum here. Well, why do I need to keep writing that? Now I know that this means a sum, so he dropped it. And it just looks like this. So this is called the Einstein summation notation. And it's used widely, widely, widely in relativity. Okay, now let's read this wacky little equation that we started with up there. All right, this is saying the partial derivative of a basis vector with respect to a coordinate. And the derivative of a vector is a vector. So a vector can be expressed as a linear combination of its components and its basis vectors. So you would read this as this is the partial derivative of the ith basis vector with respect to the jth, the coordinate, is equal to this component, which is called the Christoffel the symbol, times the basis vector. Now, look at these indexes. We got an i and a j, and this i is in the lower position, and this j is in the lower position. It looks like it's in the upper position because it's atop of this x, but it's not. Since it's in the denominator, it's in the lower, it's considered to be in the lower position. So we have to put it over this side of the equation by the rules of tensor, the, the calculus, and these i, j's are called the free indexes, okay? And we know that this is going to be a, a summation of something. It's going to be more than one term. So we have to put this upper index and lower index the same, all right? So these are called free indexes, and these k's are called summation indexes, in relativity, and they're called dummy indexes in math. I don't know why they're different, but but it is. So in 3D, uh, in, in two dimensions, let's expand this to what it would actually look like. So we would have, I, I just chose to take the partial derivative of the E1 basis vector with respect to the X2, the coordinate. So 1 and 2 are free indexes. So I, I, I can't change them. I have to use them like that. So I write down right here, C, I, J, I got 1, 2, one, two. And the case, since it's summation index, in the first case it's one, and in the second case it's two. So this is a real equation that you would see in general relativity. Okay? Now let's use that, what we just learned, to look at some vector addition. All right, so we got two vectors here, A and B, and we write them like this, and the rules are that in vector addition, you can only add like to like. So you can only add E1 to E1 and E2 to E2. You can't add E1 to E2. All right? So we can, can bracket these as A1 plus B1, E1, plus A2 plus B2, E2. And now we can generalize that to look like this. So this is a summation index. So in the first case, I equals 1. So it's 1, 1, 1, which is this part. In the second case, it's 2, so it's 2, 2, 2, like this in, the, in, in this part, okay? So, let's just look at a quick example of uh, vectors in Cartesian coordinates. I'm sure you've all done this and seen this, but let's just make sure we're all on this, the same page, okay? So, here's these two vectors, A and B. I made them up, 2, 2, 3, 1. So, we use our generalized the, the format. And we say A1 plus B1, so it'd be 2 plus 3, plus A2 plus B2, B2, 1, and E1 and E2 basis vectors. So we get 5 and 3. Okay? Okay, so let's actually look at this on a graph just to make sure that we're all on the, the, the same page. Okay, so we're going to put down our basis to vectors. So we have our E1 basis vector, we have our E2, the basis the vectors. And you see they're one unit long, and they're 90 degrees apart. So these are called orthonormal basis vectors, and this is the Cartesian coordinate, the, the system, where everything is the same in every direction. That's why it's so widely used, because it's so nice to use. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in relativity, and we'll get to that. Okay, so let's put our first vector down. We've got A, and we said it was 2E1, so it's 1, 2E1s, 1, 2E2s. Okay, here's A. Let's put down B. 
And we said it was three E1s, one, two, three, and one E2s. So there it is. All right. Now let's add them together. We get a new vector, and it is, uh, nope, that's not it. <laughs> it is two, four, five E1s, and one, two, three E2s. So it's three plus two is five, and two plus one is three, okay? Now let's go back and do something more interesting. Okay, this is vector multiplication. Uh, when you multiply vectors together, uh, we call it the dot product. And it looks like this. So A dot B is equal to vector A, and you put a dot, vector B. Okay, now since A, AI and BI, BJ, are scalars, we can pull them outside and put their product out here. And then we have the dot product of EI dot EJ. Now the dot, the product, the multiplication of two vectors produces a scalar, okay? It produces a number. It doesn't produce a vector, it produces a number. Now look at this for a second. We've got a double, the sum here, right? We got I in the upper, I in the lower, J in the upper, and J in the lower. So this is a double summation. And I and J can be either 1 or 2, so we have all the permutations of 1 and 2, which would be 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 2, 2. So, so this produces four terms. Okay? Does that make sense? So it looks like this. So I and J are both 1. I is 1, J is 2. I is 2, J is 1. I and J are both 2. So it produces this thing, okay? Now, the dot product of these basis vectors has a special meaning, okay? And those things look like is called the metric tensor. In this case, we would write it as G-I-J, the metric tensor. We're going to get to that, and it looks like this. So G11, G12, G21, and G22, all right? Now, so we can write a generalized form of the dot, the, the product, where it is the metric tensor times the product of the components. All right, so the metric tensor is all of this, and this is the product of the components. So this is the generalized form of the dot, the product, and relativity. Now let's do some examples, okay? Let's do a multiplication in Cartesian, the coordinates. Here's our two vectors that we just got through, through using, right? So we're going to form the dot, the product of A and B, and we're going to use our generalized, the format we just come up with, right? So now we got to find our metric tensor components. But before we do that, we have to understand something about these unit, these Basis vectors, I told you before, they're orthonormal basis vectors. Ortho means that they're 90 degrees apart, and normal implies their unit length 1. Okay? So, the definition of the dot product is actually A dot B is equal to the magnitude of vector A times the magnitude of vector B times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay? So, let's write down this with the basis vectors. So we got EI dot EJ would give us the magnitude of EI times the magnitude of EJ times the cosine angle between them. So let's start with 1, 1. Well, we know what the magnitude of these, they're unit vectors, right? So a unit vector has a magnitude of 1. That's why it's called a unit vector. So it's just 1, 1. Well, what's the angle between them? Well, they're on top of each other. It's E1, E1. So the angle is 0. What's cosine zero? One. So E1 dot E1 is one. Well, what about one, two? The same thing, one, one. But they're, or, they're orthogonal. We just said that they were orthogonal. So it's 90 degrees apart. What's cosine of 90? Zero. What about two, one? Same thing, zero. What about two, two? It's one. Because the cosine of zero is one. All right? So 
This is called the identity, the matrix. In Cartesian, the coordinates, the metric tensor is the identity, the matrix. So if we go back and plug in everything we just did, so G11 is 1, all of these cross terms are 0, you see? And G22 is 1. So the dot product then is just 8. All right? Does that make sense? Now, in order to go further, we need to find the magnitudes of vectors A and B, okay? So let's go look at that. Okay, so here's our two vectors again, A and B. And there's an angle between them. We're going to call it theta, okay? Now, <clears throat> we want to know what the length of these are. How long is this? Because it's just sticking out here in space. Well, in Cartesian, the coordinates, that's why they're so beautiful, uh, it's very easy to do because... It forms a right triangle, right? Here is leg one, here is leg two. There's a 90 degree right there. And this is the hypotenuse. So this squared plus that squared is equal to this squared. And for the green one, this squared plus that squared equals that squared, the Pythagorean, the theorem, okay? So now we can go back and calculate all this. Okay, so we said A1, the short leg was 1, the other leg was was 2, A1 was 2, A2 is 2, we square them both, we get 8, take the square root, we get 2.83, and B was 3 1, so we square that, we get 10, take the square root, we get 3.16. So this is the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B. Now we said the definition of the dot, the, the product is, a dot B equals magnitude of A, magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle. But between them, well, we got everything we need now to find the dot product. Oh, here it was again. All right. So we just solved for cosine theta, which is this divided by that. So we found the dot product was 8. We just found these two magnitudes. You multiply them together. So the cosine of that angle is this number. You take the inverse cosine of both sides and you get 26.6 degrees. All right. So uh, that's a good place to stop because we're going to uh, keep getting into something a little bit more complicated next time. I'll see you then.